Hello everyone. Let us begin with the very first lecture of class 8th Mathematics with chapter number 1 Rational Numbers. Dear students, you have already studied about rational numbers, its representation on the number line, comparison of rational numbers, various operations to be performed on rational numbers like addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. Now, in this grade 8, we shall review more about those operations and learn more about their properties like closure property, commutative property, associative property, existence of identity, inverse and distributivity. Now, before moving directly to rational numbers, let us have a quick recap of few sets of numbers. Now, the very first set which set of numbers which you should be aware about is the set of natural numbers. Though you have studied these sets of numbers in your previous classes, but to understand this chapter properly, we should have a quick recap of all these sets of numbers. Let us begin with very first set of uh, numbers that is natural numbers. Counting numbers starting from 1, 2, 3 till infinity are known as natural numbers. Now next comes the whole numbers. If I include 0 in the set of natural numbers, then this particular set of numbers will be known as whole numbers. Now next set of numbers which uh, you should be aware about is the set of integers. Now, these integers play a crucial role in this chapter rational numbers because rational numbers mostly rely on these sets of numbers that is integers. Now, what are integers? The group of positive and negative numbers along with 0 are known as, are known as integer numbers. Now, for example, I am taking few integer numbers like minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. It means if I include negative of natural numbers in the set of whole numbers, then this particular set of numbers will be known as integers. Now, coming to rational numbers, rational numbers are represented by Q. Now, what do you mean by rational numbers? If a number can be represented in the form of P by Q, where P and Q both are integers and Q should not be equal to 0, then that particular number is known as rational number. So, for a number to be a rational number, two conditions should be satisfied. First, P and Q, that is numerator and denominator, both should be integers. And second condition, which is also very important, that Q should not be equal to 0. If these two, both the conditions are satisfied, then we can very easily say that this particular number is a rational number. So, two conditions should be Verify it for a number to be a rational number first. P and Q both should be integers, that is numerator and denominator both should be integers and Q should not be equal to 0. Now, on the basis of this definition, let us have a view on few important points. First point that should be noted is, the ratio P by Q can be further simplified and represented in decimal form. It means, if a number can be written in the form of decimal notation, can be represented in decimal notation, then we can also, we can say that this particular number is also a rational number. Now, next important point that is to be kept in our mind is the set of rational numerals are positive numbers, negative numbers and zero. As we have studied in the definition of integers, what are integers? Positive numbers, positive natural numbers, negative natural numbers, including zero. That particular set of numbers is known as integers and we know that integers play an important role in rational numbers. Now, next point that is very that is also very important that which is the rational numbers can be expressed as a fraction. Obviously, if a number can be written in the form of ratio, then that particular number should be a rational number provided both the conditions should be satisfied. Now, let us take few examples. I am taking P as 10, Q as 2. Now, if I need to take the ratio that is P over Q, that will be 10 over 2 which is equal to 5. Now, we need to find out whether this 5 over 1 or 10 over 2 is a rational number or not. Now, let us check both the conditions of rational numbers. First, P is integer, P is an integer, Q is again an, an integer and Q that is 
2 is not equal to 0. So, both the conditions are satisfied. So, we can easily state that 10 over 2 that is equal to 5 over 1 is a rational number. Next comes 1, let us suppose P is equal to 1, Q is equal to 1000. Now, taking their ratio, we will be getting 1 over 1000 that will be equal to 0 0.001, which is again a decimal notation and we have studied few important points regarding uh, rational numbers that we, uh, decimal notation, if a number can be presented in decimal notation, then also it will be a rational number because it is again satisfying both the conditions of rational numbers. Next comes, if P is equal to 7 and Q is equal to 0. Now, let us have whether P is, let us see whether P is uh, an integer. Yes, definitely P is equal to 7. So, it is an integer. Q is equal to 0. It is again an integer. Now, coming to second condition, which is Q should not be equal to 0. But here, in this case, Q is equal to 0. So, the second condition fails in this case. And if we take the ratio that is P over Q, that will be 7 over 0. And this ratio, as we all know, that it is not defined because Q is equal to 0. So, we can say that it is not defined. 7 by 0 is not defined. Now, let us have a few, uh, let us have a look on set of uh, types of rational numbers. We have positive rational numbers and negative rational numbers. Now, what are positive rational numbers? If both the numerator and denominator are of same signs. For example, 12 by 17. It means either they can be both positive or they can be both negative also. For example, 12 over 17, here P that is the numerator is positive. Q that is denominator is again positive. It means they are having same signs. So, we can say that it is a positive rational number. Now, let us take minus 9 over minus 11. As the definition states that both the numerator and denominator should be of same sign. So, here P is negative that is minus 9. Q is again negative that is equal to minus 11. So, they are having same signs. So, we can say that it is a positive rational number. Likewise, we can take more examples like 3 by 5 minus 3 by 5 likewise. Now, coming to negative rational numbers. What are negative rational numbers? If numerator and denominator are of opposite signs, it means if P is positive, Q should be negative. If P is negative, Q should be no, uh, positive. For example, minus 2 by 17. Now, in this example, P that is numerator is negative which is equal to minus 2. Now, Q, what about Q? Q here is 17 which is, which is positive. So, both are of opposite signs and so we can say that it is a negative rational number. Likewise, we can take another example like 9 over minus 11. Here in this example, P is positive and Q is negative. Likewise, we have taken a uh, few more examples. Now, let us discuss few basic operations which are to be performed on rational numbers. Students, we have already performed few operations on integers, whole numbers, natural numbers. Now, it is the turn to perform these those various operations on rational numbers and we know that in mathematics the basic operations which we need to perform on these sets of numbers are addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. Now let us perform very first operation that is addition operation. Now if I am take if I need to add two rational numbers here I am taking general rational numbers p by q and s by t so that you can move you can move easily further. Now let us take p by q and s by t. First of all, if I need to add two rational numbers, the very first thing which I need to do is to make their denominator same. Hence, we get p into t plus q into s divided by qt. Let us take an example. If one rational number is 1 over 2, another rational number is 3 by 4 and I need to add these two rational numbers, then first of all, I need to take make their denominator same. Now, what is how to make the denominator same? It, same? it is very well known that to make the denominator same, we need to take their LCM. So, the LCM of 2 and 4 is 4. So, we have taken 2 plus 3 in the numerator divided by 4 that will be equal to 5 over 4. Now, uh, second operation that is to be performed on rational numbers is subtraction operation. Now, likewise we have performed addition operation in the same way we need to perform the subtraction operation. First of all, we need to make the denominator same and then subtract the numerators. For example, 1 by 2 is to be subtracted from 3 by 4. So, it will be 2 minus 3 divided by 4 that will be equal to minus 1 over 4. 
Now, after performing addition and subtraction operations, we need to perform multiplication and division also on the rational numbers. For addition and subtraction, what we have done, we need to first make the denominator same and then accordingly, if I need to add, I will be adding the numerators. If I need to subtract, I need to subtract the denominators. Now, let us take a look on the multiplication operation. In case of multiplication, while multiplying two rational numbers, the numerator and denominator of the rational numbers are to be multiplied multiplied respectively. For example, if p by q is to be multiplied by s over t, then numerators will be multiplied and denominators will be multiplied. Take an example, 1 by 2 is to be multiplied by 3 by 4, then it will be 1 into 3, that is the numerators will be multiplied, divided by 2 into 4, which are the denominators. So the answer comes out to be 3 over 8. Now, coming to division operation. If p by q is to be divided by s over t, then it can be represented likewise. p over q divided by s over t, that will be equal to p into t divided by s q into s. Now, here, let us take an example. 1 over 2 is to be divided by 3 over 4. Now, as we all know that this multi uh, division sign is to be changed into the multiplication sign and 3 by 4 is to be taken as 4 by 3. So, after doing this, I will be, multi I will be, multiplying the numerators and denominators which will be 1 into 4 divided by 2 into 3 that will be equal to 4 over 6 and in the standard form it will be 2 over 3. In the simply simplified form it will be 2 over 3. Now I hope you have understood all the operations on the rational numbers. Now coming to additive identity. What do you mean by additive identity? Now for a rational number p by q again q should not be equal to 0 there exists a rational number 0 such that if I add 0 to any particular rational number, the answer comes out to be the same rational number. It is quite obvious and we have you have studied in previous classes also. If I am adding any number to 0, the result will be the same number. Same is the case with the rational number. So, we can say that number 0 is the additive identity of rational numbers. So, 4 by 7 plus 0 will give you 4 by 7. Now, existence of additive inverse. As we have understood that 0 is known as the additive identity. Now, using that concept, I need to find out the additive inverse of a rational number. How to find out the additive inverse of a rational number? Now, for every rational number p by q, q should not be equal to 0. There exists a rational number minus p over q such that if I add those two rational numbers, answer comes out to be 0. Obviously, if I am taking a positive rational number to make it 0, I need to add negative of that same rational number into that number so the answer will comes out to be 0. So we can say that minus of p by q is the additive inverse of p over q. So additive inverse of p by uh, 5 by 3 is equal to minus of 5 by 3. The simple thing what you are supposed to do is to find the additive inverse we are supposed to take the negative of the given rational number. Now Coming to multiplicative identity, as we have studied about additive identity, additive inverse, the same is the case with the multiplicative identity. As the name indicates, for a rational number p by q, q should not be equal to 0, there exists a rational number 1 such that if I multiply, as the name indicates, multiplicative identity, such that if I multiply any rational number with 1, answer should comes out to be the same rational number. Now, so we can say that number 1 is the multiplicative multiplicative identity of rational numbers and let us take an example if 4 by 9 is to be multiplied by 1 that will be equal to 4 by 9. Now coming to multiplicative inverse what do you mean by multiplicative inverse for any rational number or every rational number p by q q should not be equal to 0 there exists a rational number q by p such that if i multiply those two rational numbers answer comes out to be 1 and for to get the answer 1 definitely i need to take the reciprocal of the given rational number then only i will be able to get the answer 1 similarly so, we can say q by p is the multiplicative inverse of p over q. Let us understood this with the help, help of an example. Multiplicative inverse of 5 by 3 is 3 over 5. Now, dear students, I hope you have understood the definition of rational numbers, concept of operations to be performed on rational numbers, how to perform those very operations on the rational numbers, concept of additive identity, additive inverse, 
multiplicative identity and multiplicative inverse now on the basis of those concepts which we have studied i am assigning you the homework from exercise 1.1 you are supposed to complete question number 2 first part second part third question second part fourth question second part and fourth part in your homework notebook thank you